pioneers activity. We are really the pioneers in the biological passport activity. Sometimes uh, I don't know what is the difference uh, between pioneers and kamikaze, but <laughs> is it good? Hai compreso che cosa fa, se vuoi del pioniere, che cosa fa il ministro del tuo si sentivo sempre camicazzi, perché perché ci non permette di avere giovedì, perché c'è il c'è dei rischi, c'è dei pressioni su tutte le responsabilità, ma lui sei avrei te camicazzi già nel 2001 avec le proteste, a non essere avec le controlli de santé, de temps en temps des camicazzi amène à des bons résultats parce qu'on voit que les autres suivent et voilà donc ça. Ça c'est la première ligne. Voilà. Ça c'est vrai. This is recognized for the, all the scientific community. And um, so just a few words about the biological passport. Uh, this year we had more riders in our registered testing pool. The, last year we had 848, this year we arrived at 955. So Plus de 950 coureurs cette année dans notre target testing pool. And just to let you know, from the starting of the program, we analyzed already 21,600 samples. Plus que 21 000 contrôles depuis le lancement du programme. Et ce qui est important plus, c'est que nous avons 1,500 biological passports actifs dans notre database. Et on a dans notre système de données plus de 1,500 passeports biologiques actifs. Ce qui est vraiment un changement de la stratégie, parce que nous avons adopté ce que nous appelons l'intelligent testing. Ça ne veut pas dire que l'année dernière, nous étions stupides. But <laughs> yeah, we were particularly intelligent, so, so it means that we concentrate our efforts on riders that has to be targeted. So we less test riders that have no known passport, and we concentrate our attention on riders that for one reason or another has to be tested more. Yes. Sur la base de ces chiffres qu'elle vient de vous donner, euh, cette année on a un peu modifié notre stratégie parce que on est entré dans une phase de contrôle intelligent. Ce qui veut dire, Francesca l'a bien rappelé, ce n'est pas vrai que ce n'est pas le cas, les patients n'étaient pas stupides, on ne faisait pas les contrôles stupides, mais aujourd'hui on peut se concentrer grâce à cette riche base de données qu'on qu a dans notre système, on peut se concentrer sur les passeports qui nous intéressent. But in the end, we will uh, close our activities with 8,700 8, samples and uh, uh, analysis. And last year, we finished our activities with 8,300 analysis. So it means we tested more. So, même avec cette uh, nouveauté stratégique, même avec les contrôles ciblés, uh, à la fin de l'année, on aura, on aura 8,700 contrôles pour le passeport biologique, ce qui signifie augmentation de 400 contrôles à environ par rapport à 8300 de 2010. Et plus de 60% de ces samples ont été testés pour l'IPO. Et plus de 60% de ces tests ont passé le contrôle IPO. Donc pour moi, le report est terminé. Donc si vous avez des questions... Il y a toujours des questions. Voilà, alors, Pat, tu veux ajouter quelque chose avant les questions Ok, non. Mr. McQuaid and Francesca are now ready for question. Dan. Um, can you update us in terms of how, if there are any new cases? Um, I think in 2000, May 2010, you said that you're working on new cases but couldn't define when the dates might be of when they might be opened. I souhaite un terme de référence chronologique sur des prochains cas éventuels. Est-ce qu'il y a un So maybe tomorrow, maybe one week, one month, never. It depends because, especially for the biological passport, it's really complex to arrive in the end. So until the end, you don't know if a case is a case or not. So there is not a case until when the case arrives. I would like to add one thing. In knowing your way of interpreting information like this, I would like to repeat once again that the passport biologic is a system that never sleeps. It's never a sleeping system. On peut avoir un cas demain, Daniel. We can open a case tomorrow if it's necessary. But if we should say right now that we could open a case tomorrow, please do not write on your newspaper that UCI is thinking to open a case tomorrow because it could be tomorrow, but it could be in one month, it could be in one year, it could be at any time. And another thing that I have to add is that you know, uh, it's always in this way in Antigua. 14 years the time it is worth. So when you have the first case is arriving, 
the situation is coming down, so you have the deterrence. So it's not that you have less problems after the first cases. Oh, well, the important for EPO, it was the same. Once the system is in place, we assist to a better case because it's the effect of the terror that enters the scene. We've had the same situation when we launched the control anti-EPO. After the first results, it's the same thing. We've assisted to a better case because it's the effect of the terror that enters the scene. We've had the same situation when we launched the control anti-EPO. After the first results, it's the same thing. We've assisted to a better case because it's the effect of the terror that enters the scene. We've had the same situation when we launched the control anti-EPO. After the first results, it's the same thing. We've assisted to a better case because it's the effect of the terror that enters the scene. We've had the same situation when we launched the control anti-EPO. After the first results, it's the same thing. We've assisted to a better case because it's the effect of the terror that enters the scene. We've had the same situation when we launched the control anti-EPO. After the first results, it's the But he's a mess in his life, he's immature, and now he's going out for two years because of the whereabouts. Do you think a whereabout is okay to throw him out for two years when he, everybody knows he's clean, but he's a mess in his life and immature? Ça n'est pas. La question est ici, ils ont les champions du monde qui est très bien, selon, selon notre confrère, mais à cause des whereabouts, il risque d'avoir deux ans. Est-ce que c'est juste de mettre quelqu'un sous la touche pendant deux ans simplement parce qu'il n'a il a pas bien géré une, une procédure bah, Well, yeah, first of all, there's a procedure in place, and I would like to to anticipate what the what the final decision is in relation to that. Secondly, one thing, and, and it, it is unfortunate. Yes, I, I do believe, and I've heard different people tell me that the athlete is a little bit wayward, and he loses flight tickets, he loses laptops, and this and the other, and and, and uh, he, you know he's arrived at this situation. However, the athlete was aware of the, the fact that he was heading in towards a third mistest. He was aware after the two missed tests that another one was meant that he was going to he was going to be facing a sanction. I would also like to add another little bit because there has been sort of speculation, media speculation about the timing of this and the, the timing of, of the last test in April, and uh, and, and I'll admit um, a certain aspect of it. Um, the UCI, the third test was sometime I think the end of April. The UCI then had went into a period of correspondence with with the athlete to, to get explanations and so forth before the UCI could move, pro, pro, process the case. There was a delay, too long of a delay, and when I found out, or when the UCI found out that the, there had been a delay and we found out the reason for the delay, we took action immediately to ensure that nothing like that happens again. More than that, I wouldn't like to say about it, but I can assure you that it is it is unacceptable to the UCI that that.